beautiful Berkeley on University Avenue by Comcast. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Glad you could join us. Anyway, uh, we're out here, uh, hashtag for this event is don't block my internet. And we're out here, uh, I guess we're demonstrating for net neutrality. Here, uh, not only here in the United States, but all over the world. And not just for your internet connection at home, but also for your internet connection with your wireless. Because uh, companies like Verizon and Comcast and AT&T are uh, colluding to uh, have special internet fast lanes, uh, which is very similar to if you were getting on the freeway and the, they have a toll road. Well, okay, you got to pay to cross the bridge, but supposedly they took I-5 and decided they were going to charge for I-5 for each lane and said lane uh, the left lanes can go 85 miles or 105 miles an hour, the middle lane can go 70, and the right lane can only do 25. All right, well, we know what kind of hazards that, that creates on the freeways and interstates, so uh, why wouldn't that also create a hazard on the information superhighway? So uh, that's why we're out here. In beautiful Berkeley. So I've got a nice little crowd that's... Uh, starting to form. Uh, they're expecting between 100 and 150 people. And this is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. I'm going to try and hobble around and try to give you the best live stream possible. Uh, and I see lots of smiling faces.
Anyway, for the just joining us, we're here in Berkeley. Uh, don't block my internet. Uh, demonstration for net neutrality. And we're out here in front of the Comcast office here. They have these uh, selfie poles now that, you know, I guess it's similar to this, but you can angle it back at yourself and people use them. And so they're outlawing the art galleries and stuff. It's kind of weird. That's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, they're going to restrict people from bringing them around. With them. I never yeah. had a problem with this, though. No, that's cool. Nobody's ever quite... Well, one time I got questioned at 850 Bryant. So this is just an aftermarket piece that holds your phone on there, Yeah. Huh? Sweet. Yeah, I've been doing this for a number of years. I'll try to keep everything really simple. I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of nuances to this that are that make it different. A lot that make it a lot different than photography. Yeah. You know, yeah trying to build up audience. You know, getting people to watch. You know, and it's live. I ride my bike. I always take my iPhone and I take tons of pictures. And put, that's what I put on Facebook. My, my iPhone. That's good. It's good to can't, get take, can't take this on my bike cards. No, well, not unless you have a you have a Wi-Fi card for that. What's that? Um, they make Wi-Fi cards for those now, but they get real hot. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we're getting started here. We're here in Berkeley. For those of you just joining us, at the Don't Block My Internet rally, and this is your hobbling live streamer for you, man Sullivan. So glad you could join us. Peace out to everybody watching. So. Uh, Got a few folks out here. Okay. It's a live stream, don't worry about it. Feel free to leave a message uh, to let me know how audio-visual, because I'm running without a producer today, as usual. Uh, a couple of announcements. If you're in the Berkeley area and you're interested in live streaming, uh, please come to our KPFA meetings there at 3 p.m. Uh, on Fridays. And if you're looking out over there, it's right around the corner from that white building. So do come out and join us in our live streaming. We'll be live streaming uh, independently and also with a group of folks at KPFA. Uh, for more information, you can either message me here on the chat or message me through Twitter at Freeman Sullivan or Freeman Sullivan at gmail.com for more information. So, here you join us. And we're out here on University Avenue here in Berkeley, California. Close to the front of the Comcast headquarters. I don't know why we're not in front of the Comcast headquarters, but we're out here nonetheless. And we're about ready to start our demonstrations. I do believe it is a little bit past 12 o'clock. I can't tell the time here. Overcharged and underrepresented. I, I find it incredible to believe that here in the United States that we're actually like 20th, 19th or 20th in terms of internet speed. Uh, I believe that a lot of these companies, uh, you know, there was what happened to the fiber optic system that we're supposed to be rolling out. You know, most people still have a copper line that runs out to their house. Um, Comcast offers a copper line. And whatever happened to all this great fiber optics that we were supposed to have? I know they have it in uh, South Korea and then a lot of places around the uh, advanced industrial countries around the world. Uh, why not here? Uh, you know, slower internet handicaps us all. And not only a slower internet online when you're the wire that goes into your house, but also wireless communications. Uh, we'll be out here talking about Verizon and AT&T, whose offices are around the corner on Shattuck. And uh, the march will be leading to there. And we hope that you stick around and uh, participate in chat. Let me know how the auto visual is doing. And uh, thank you. Dictate the term.
terms of what's happening with our internet. And we're here to say that the FCC needs to make sure that the internet providers, that the broadband providers get treated like utility companies so that they're regulated, so that there's minimum standards for public safety, minimum standards for uh, reliability, for privacy, and make sure that customers are protected. Make sure that these companies provide broadband to rural communities, to inner city communities of color, to everybody, and not just to the rich communities where they can maximize their revenue. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And your name is? <laughs> and your name is, sir? I'm, I'm Mark Cody. Nice to meet you, Mark. Yeah, yeah. And what organization are you with? Yeah, I'll give you a little card. I'm Alex, by the way. Alex Amber. Alex, pleasure. I work for Turn, Utility Reform Network. Cool, thank you. My name's Clark. Clark, pleasure. Yeah. So we're down here at uh, University Avenue here in Berkeley. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Thanks for joining us. Quick! That was quick. I mean, hey, I didn't even have any follow-up questions. You nailed every point. I'm thinking... Well, we were just speaking with Mark W. Tony of the Turn, uh, the Utility Reform Network. <laughs> So we got a nice little crowd gathering here. We got about 50 people, I'm expecting up to 150. It's a beautiful day. So there you have it. We want internet equal access to the internet for everybody. No toll roads on the internet, please. Because the development of a free and open internet, uh, you wouldn't be able to have this live stream right now if we didn't have a free and open internet. Because I'm sure that a lot of topics that I cover would be censored. So. There you have it. are going to decide whether or not we get to build our movements online and offline. These movement, these uh, Washington decision makers are going to tell us whether or not we get to use the internet the way we did to build Black Lives Matter. The way we did to move the Not One More campaign. The way we did to, you, to do the Fight for 15 campaign. They're going to decide whether or not we get to have the kind of freedom of speech that not only we deserve, but we've earned, and we aim to keep it. Yeah. 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 I don't believe that Washington decision makers should have the power to make that decision. That's a different issue. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different issue. I believe that the technology that the people have made belongs to us. Yeah. I believe right. that these companies come in and they tear up our streets, 
they move through our neighborhoods, they use our public dollars, and then they call that shit theirs. I don't believe that that's theirs. I don't believe that the technology that is at our disposal belongs to private companies. I believe it belongs to the people. Now, in the 1960s and the 1950s, the civil rights movement had to negotiate with a white male media system. They had to mediate, right? They had their, 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 their message had to be mediated by white men. NBC, ABC, CBS. Today, trans people, queer people, black people of all different types get to be in leadership of a civil rights movement because we can speak directly to our audiences online. We don't need to mediate nothing. We don't need gatekeepers to tell us who can and who cannot speak. Every leader in this movement has emerged because we can talk directly to our people. Yes. So we're not going to let anybody take that away from us. Let me tell you who's trying to do that, though. We got these folks right here. Comcast, now you see what happens. Watch what happens. Watch this. <laughs> Don't worry, you're on video. We can come in and be customers. Actually, it says warning. Actually, it says warning, do not lie. And let me, this is what happens. This is exactly what the internet service providers are attempting to do. They're trying to lock the door on free speech. When I say hell no, you say that's right, hell no. That's right. Hell no. That's right. Hell no. That's right. Hell no. That's right. You know, we'll let this private business go ahead and lock the door on the people because that's what they do. But before we do that, let's give them, let's give them a bill. They've been giving us a bill. I say. We charge late fees. The bills are too damn high. What? The bills are too damn high. And we're not going to pay anymore for our rights to be abridged. We're not going to pay anymore for our rights to be terminated. So we ask you to take that message to your bosses, your CEO, and let them know that we will not stand down. Do not block our internet. Don't block my internet. Don't block my internet. Don't block my internet. Look at that. A long time advocate for black freedom. Yes. A long time leader in this community. And I'm going to bring him up to tell y'all what he has to say about this here company, Comcast. First of all, thank you all for coming out. I want to take you back to February of 2003. It's a story that many people don't know, but it's a, it's a, a significant one. In Harlem, on 126th Street in New York City, close to 2,000 people showed up to a church in the dead of winter for a tribunal. It was a tribunal put on by a radio veteran by the name of Bob Law. And what they were protesting was the daily assaults that black people in New York City were dealing with in terms of radio. The radio stations that were in New York City we're doing all sorts of things ranging from having non-black DJs on the air, freely using the N-word to two and three million people at a time. They had stopped playing a lot of the local artists and there was no access for community groups. This tribunal went on for six hours. Everybody from Public Enemy showed up to Africa Bambata yeah. and just person after person who was just an ordinary average Joe or Jane came down there and talked 
one after the other, explaining how their needs weren't being met by the local media. Now, what we were looking at at that time was, in 2003, it was six years into the Consolidation Act, the telecom bill that made radio become just under a few companies. You all follow me on this? Yeah. yeah. Now, I happened to run into that weekend Michael Powell, who at the time was the head of the FCC. And I asked him, I said, Mike, I said, right now you have all these people that are protesting what is going on with radio, in particular black radio, what should the people be doing? He told me, he said, what you all need to do is go online, go on the internet, take, it, take your fight and talk to the people there. That's what the chairman of the FCC did. Over that period of time, many of us had no choice but to go online. Many of us uh, formed communities. Many of us invented uh, ways in which we could talk to no one another. So you have social media, you have organizing tools, you have this vibrant community that has exploded online. And as Malkia was saying, many uh, communities that were once marginalized have now been able to get a voice for themselves right. and now be heard. Yes. Now that we are at this point where many of us are able to speak directly to our community, who shows up investing more than a billion dollars into lobbying efforts? Who shows up and wants to charge us fees for something that we shouldn't even be charged for in the first place? Who wants to show up and take the public good and privatize it? We're talking about companies like Comcast. When I got a Comcast thing, it was $39 just to go on the internet. It is now $90. So that, and that's in, in for less services, right? And that's just for the internet. Right. We're not talking about people who have cable and all the other stuff. So we're basically talking about corporate dominance. And it's not just that they're raising fees. Now what they want to do is they want to control the flow of information. And that was the point of describing what went on 13 years ago in Harlem. People were upset that their information was being blocked. It was being blocked by the clear channels. It was being blocked by the ABCs, the NBCs, and the CBSs. So when we went on the internet, we were no longer blocked. Now that we are here, here comes Comcast, talking to all our Congress people, paying folks off, just to make sure that our information can't get from point A to point B. We once again face the threat of being a marginalized people, marginalized community, marginalized folks who are ridiculed, whose points of view are obscured. We once again run the risk of being folks who are no longer having a voice. And this is something that has to change. So it starts with, first of all, making people aware of what companies like Comcast are doing. That's the first thing. The second thing is to make sure that people stand in alignment with us and understand that it should be a basic human right for us to be able to freely communicate. And when I say freely communicate, I'm not talking about just me being able to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, but freely communicate to the masses. Why should one company or two companies be the only one to talk to the masses while the rest of us are subjected to whatever opinions or whatever omissions that they have? This is the game of Comcast. This is what they're about. And that's the type of thing that we need to stop. That's why we're here today. And I'll just close by saying, I know some of this may sound a bit complicated, but it's designed to be complicated so that people just get bored, like some of the folks inside there. And they go, well, I don't want to hear this because it's too complicated. It's called dumbing down the community. And companies like this, that's what they specialize in. So I'll just close by saying, we got to stand up Make sure that they don't block our internet. Make sure they don't block our ability to communicate to one another. If they do, we'll be back in the same position that we were 10, 15 years ago when we were dealing with consolidation of traditional media. Now we're going to have corporate tyranny in the form of Comcast, AT&T, and other providers. So thank you. All right. Give it up. Let me get, uh, let me get my, my family right here. Now we're about to march. Are y'all ready to march? Yeah! And before we march, we're going to get uh, a little hyped up. Y'all ready to get hyped? Yeah! Y'all ready to get hyped? Yeah! Y'all ready to get hyped? Yeah! All right, let's do it. All right, so y'all should have my little cheat. She said, she, Alabama was a freedom fighter, and she taught us how to fight. We're going to fight.
Uh, large companies like Comcast, Verizon, AT&T, where they overcharge you for the internet. So why are you asking for it? Equal access for everybody. Also, everybody should have internet access, yeah. That's why we're out here. Thank you. Great. It's always good to ask questions. So for, so you're fighting for everybody to have access to internet. Right. So there's Wi-Fi everywhere. Not only that, everybody would have the same speed. Right? Because some companies want to fast track their information and make it so it's not equal information, right? Oh. So people don't have equal speeds. Oh, okay, okay. Right? And then they don't want to build lines in, in poor neighborhoods and, oh. and only for rich people, right? Oh, okay. Thanks. We are the have a good day. Honey.
semester. Oh, I great. Might, I might try and stay another, another semester to manage all my credit thesis. But, um, I can walk out of here this year with a philosophy degree. I don't know. We'll see. They're probably going to kick me out because I was going to finish the Ah, uh, professional student. <laughs> That's good. Now, now, one, we are the people. Two, three. What's the I'm working at KPFA now. Working on building up our live streamer channel and getting um, training people. Oh, that's right. You were saying that there was this is what democracy looks like. Yeah. Not for KPFA because um, you know the radio is kind of a centralized concept, and uh, live stream will free up our editorial policy quite a bit. You know because we're not just broadcasting on one channel. This is what democracy looks like. You know, right? Individual live streamers are free to broadcast wherever they want, and since they're doing it on their own and freelance, well then Pacifica has no like they can't control what's going on. Because you know because. No they're going to try to censor no a lot of, uh, a lot of what KPFA is doing no justice, no in order to keep, keep their corporate sponsorship. Yeah, the people that own KPFA. No justice, so, no so I was brought in, I was asked free. to come in and train people, so, you know. So how, do you, how, do you, how are you going to navigate that path? Uh, well, that's just what I said. Um, each live streamer is... Uh, independent on themselves right right so you know basically what we're doing is we're using a program like XSplit to rebroadcast individual live streamers so. it's the only way you can really do it sort of like I don't know if you've ever been at globalrevolution.tv yeah. similar to that anyway for those of you just joining us we're in beautiful downtown Berkeley for the uh, Don't Block My Internet Rally. This is your live streamer, Free Man Sullivan. Thanks for joining us. I believe we're going to take a right. Oh, no. we got to watch us through Berkeley. This is where they lose me. I'm not in good enough health to be fucking marching around Berkeley. I have to stop. Sorry, guys. People that are watching, oh, I'm going to have to stop. We'll try to keep it up as long as we can. So that's my problem. You know, because I, uh, you know, I'm trying to live like a normal person again, right? And when I'm out here, i got to get a little stool or something. Because when I'm out here, it's it's hard for me to walk a long way without having a rest. Right? You know, it's fucked up. Don't get old. It sucks. <laughs> so I don't have my chair, so I don't have that convenient seat that I used to have. Right? So it's like it's literally like being tortured when I'm out here most of the time. Yeah. I have to take pain pills and shit. Right. Yeah, such is life. Yeah. Could be worse, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy basically these days. I have a little bit of peace in my life, so yeah, that goes a long way. So what's the goal here today? Raise awareness and. Uh... Yeah, basically. Uh, this demonstration was organized by Credo Mobile. <laughs> So if you're not a lot, yay, all right. I guess he was just mad because he couldn't get through, but, you know, just go up a block. I can't understand why people get mad in traffic when they see a demonstration. It's like, you know, you see all these people, just make a turn and, you know, go around it. You know? Might be supportive. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's just being Berkeley. Let's see if we got anybody on chat today. Nope. Hey, dude, do me a favor. Log in on the chat. Let me know how audio visual is coming out. Because I have no way of checking at the moment. I only brought my one smartphone. I didn't bring my other phone. What's your, what's your live stream? Oh, yeah, you can check it on your phone. It's uh, Freeman Sullivan. Isn't it uh, the same one as like, a couple years ago? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's always okay. been the same one. Right? Just taking a breather for those of you who are watching. Guys know that I'm disabled and I'm soldiering on the best that I can. That's okay. Oh yeah. 
This goes on for hours, so. Got a energetic crowd of about 15 to 75 people out here on Shattuckin University. Uh, uh, traditionally the busiest corner here in Berkeley. And I believe we're going to march down two blocks uh, where AT&T and Verizon are around the corner here. Yeah, you have the Ustream app, right? Do I have the Ustream yeah, you can, app? You can, I don't think so. You have, to, you have to watch it with the Ustream app. It won't let you. Well, yeah, maybe it is. It's new. Before, they wouldn't let you watch it unless you had the Ustream app, which is pretty stupid. Uh, no, I think download application. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, they want to get you to download that app. Yeah. It works pretty well, though. I haven't... It crashes every once in a while. Yeah, okay. I usually see all the warnings about uh, what kind of information I have to hand over to them for me to download their app, and I get scared, and then I don't download it. <laughs> well, you know, if you're going to live stream, you streams the app to... That's the app. Hey. I'm sorry, love. I don't have any, any, any change. So what do you, so what do you think about... Um, is it, is it possible to tell anything about what direction the internet is going to go? Do you have any Which thoughts what? on that? About what direction the internet is going to go? Is it going to be, are they going to clamp down on it and it's going to become commercial enterprise? Well, you know, uh, in 20, 30 years from now? Or? Today, uh, the, or yesterday, the revelations came out about how, uh, oh, we got a motorcycle cop out here now. Um, they came out today where they have all the uh, encryption codes for SIM cards now on your phone. And that uh, that the uh, NSA and uh, the GCHS from New England uh, had uh, spied on the company that makes your SIM card. So now they have a back door to get into your phone whenever they want. Um, as far as having a freer internet, uh, I don't really see that happening because uh, the one percent, the people in power, are going to try to do the best to clamp down on our freedom of speech. But uh, it's ultimately going to fail. Uh, because of things like VPNs, like I remember when Erdogan was going to try and shut down the internet in Turkey, and uh, they weren't able to do it uh, because people started setting up VPNs, and uh, because everything broadcasts, and uh, basically it's a matter of setting up networks that people can communicate. So on that side, yes. Where was that? Turkey. Yeah, Turkey. They tried to shut the internet down. And they set up a whole new network. Yeah, VPNs, to, yeah. Uh, so people really can communicate. Yeah, because you don't need to have an internet connection to be able to network with other computers. Right. And you can broadcast using your Wi-Fi. Right. So all you have to do is have a network of people. I mean, that's basically all the internet is, really. Yeah. It's just a network. A big, huge network. But yeah, I love to ditch my Comcast bill. It's too fucking expensive. You know, being on a fixed income, 90, 90 smackers a month, right? And it's not really even that fast. For another 20 bucks, I could get a, a T1 fiber optic, you know, but I'd have to pay like $300 to have it installed, which I don't have. By the way, I don't take, accept any donations. Uh, if you got money, give it to other live streamers. They need it more than I do. Let's see, uh, who am I thinking about? Uh, I know Stop Motion Solo can always use extra funds. And he uh, he's out there a bunch in New York. So, how about the other live streamers? Or take that money that you would give to me and up your, uh, your mobile plan uh, with a company like Metro PCS or, or uh, T-Mobile. Take that money and start live streaming yourself. Because uh, I'm pretty well set on this. Anyway, we're here for Don't Block the Internet. My Internet. That's a hashtag, Don't Block My Internet. This is your live streamer, Free Man Sullivan. Out here on a beautiful day. And uh, we're here at Center and Shattuck by the Berkeley Bar. If you're in the hood, catch up with us.
taking the streets for a bit here. Oh, yeah. It's always good. And Berkeley Police are under orders not to interfere with demonstrations at all. Um, from the last city council meeting that they had last Tuesday. So, they're to take a stand back approach. Thanks a lot there, Oakland Sheik. Stopping there in just a minute or two. We're headed to Verizon at the moment. Now here we go, we're about to approach Verizon. Now let me tell you a little something about Verizon as we approach. Verizon made a decision to censor its news outlet. It said that its news outlet did not report on anything to do with digital surveillance. Now guess who digital surveillance disproportionately impacts? People like me, black people, brown people, poor people. Verizon said, well, you know what? We're not going to talk about that. We're actually going to have a news outlet that will not report on the implications to this Jim Crow criminal justice system of this issue of
We're out here in front of uh, Verizon Wireless here on Shattuck Avenue in Berkeley. That's your live streamer, Free Man Sullivan. Yeah. 
that. That was foul. Right. <laughs> no cameras, no freedom of speech. They don't want the bill, apparently. They're not even letting them. Did you catch the bit where the uh, back was being the It's pretty good. We charge you with shitty internet service. Uh, uh, that was a good bill they're offering right there. So it's even just like going inside. We're just outside of Verizon here on Shadow. Oh, they in! They in! Yeah, I still couldn't get into the other place. They in! I like to say, he may not be able to let none of us in, but they in. On the microphone. <laughs> oh, right there. <laughs> oh, great one. Yeah. Calling them out. <laughs> Yeah, of course. I'm sorry about that. No problem. No problem. You can tell me about telling you. Easy, easy, easy. I will have all these people leave. Easily. In one second. So we should move over there and take the belt and we'll leave. That's it. That's it. Step aside. Step aside. Take the belt in. You're not making sure we say. I don't need that up. Thank you. Go ahead. Step inside and we will step out. It is an easy, y'all are way, way bigger than us. You ready to step in. Here, here, I'm holding it through, I got it. All right, so step in. Go ahead, y'all. Go ahead. But honestly, if you go to the last one, you can do that. I don't know about it. We're ready for our next little excursion here. Let's let you know for those of you in the rest of the country, it is absolutely beautiful out today. It's 65, almost 70 degrees. Having a seat here in Shattuck Kim Avenue. We're out in front of Verizon. Wireless. Big crowd of about 75 people. Protesting for Don't Block My Internet. Equal and open internet access for all. Uh, I guess I'll uh, go back to
I got a little closer to the speakers for people that are watching, but I have to sit down, unfortunately. Doing my best I can, folks.
should be level playing field and that we're not going to allow them to use the internet as another tool of oppression to suppress our voices um, uh, and the voices of the marginalized, right? Uh, and so we demand to be heard and we will be heard. Right. And, and we're using the internet to communicate with each other. We're using it to spread knowledge and to spread tactics. We're uniting people like never before. Um, and in the process, we're spreading love and inspiration all around the world. We are spreading and we will continue to spread like revolutionary wildfire. And there ain't nothing that they got to stop us. I thought I'd get a little head start. I'm going to go across the street here to AT&T. It's there right over there behind that little brick gilly. And as you can see the police are pretty much standoffish. They're not going to have anything to do with impeding the flow of this demonstration. Unlike the events of December 4th and 5th which we do remember quite clearly when people were assaulted by the Berkeley Police Department for demonstrating for Black Lives Matter. You can make an appointment for next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a closer, uh, as close as I get a seat. Out here in beautiful Berkeley. Talking about don't block my internet. Oh, I thought they were getting ready to march, they started chanting. Hmm. This is your lame live streamer. Free man Sullivan. Okay, well, they're talking about AT and T in front of Verizon.
Omar. So we're headed over here to AT and T. One of the three companies we visited, we've already been to Comcast a little bit earlier. Just left Verizon, and now we're headed for AT and T. So don't block my internet. Uh, that the way AT&T is lobbying in D.C. against their customers, 
I asked the, the customers, in fact, to let, uh, to, I told the customers actually about what AT&T is doing to them. I let the customers know that AT&T is in D.C. lobbying against you. I told them there's a lot of black people in there because AT&T likes to make it seem like they're so diverse. AT&T likes to make it seem like they got union jobs and they got good wages and they basically trying to buy off our voice with a couple of jobs. And my thing is, I'm not going to trade my freedom for your work. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Not only that, but I'm working for you. I'm not rich, though. You rich. I'm not getting rich. <laughs> you getting rich. So well, that's not going to work. But the reality is that that is the image. That's the myth. That's the, that's the uh, portrayal that AT&T has on, on television. So I went in there to have that conversation with them. We passed them a bill, and they took it. And uh, they agreed to pass it on. Now, I don't know if they will. Do you think they will? No. Nah. You think they tell the truth? No. Nah. Nah. They don't tell the truth. Oh, Comcast? Oh, okay. Oh, they hung up. Comcast is on the phone. <laughs> so, what, what, we're about to, we're about to wrap, wrap this up. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you. And I'm looking for my sister, Jennifer Johns. Is she here? She's supposed to be here. Can somebody hold this one all right, actually, let me get a... Uh, where's Mark Tony at? Where's Mark Tony at? Here we go. Woo! Remember that the point of what we're doing is to make the internet a two-way street and not a one-way street. Not a one-way street where the content, where... where our jobs, you know, what the corporations want is they want us to be on the receiving end of content. They want us to be content consumers, okay, and pay money and sit down and be passive. And um, what this fight is about is making the internet a two-way street where we are the ones creating content. We are the ones that get to broadcast to the public what we want to broadcast. That is what this is about. That's what this fight about. It is about whose internet? Our internet. Whose spectrum? Our spectrum. That's what this is about. Thank you. All right. Woo! Okay. Now, uh, uh, 19, who knows this song that we were singing earlier? Anybody? Who know that? Anybody? Give me my sister. Here's my sister Celeste. Come on over here, girl. Come on over here. So I'm just gonna let you know. Uh, I have been learning a tremendous amount from this sister right here, and uh, I thank you. All right. Yeah. You gonna help us out? You gonna help us close us out? All right, man. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey. Single flex zone. I'm good at something, but I'm not really good at things. Um. So it goes. Something, something was a freedom fighter taught us how to fight. And we gon' fight all day and night until we get it right. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? We on the freedom side. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? Mac is oh. the freedom fighter. They taught us how to fight. And we gon' fight all day and night until we get it right. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? We are the freedom side. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on?
And we gon' fight all day and night until we get it right. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? We on the freedom side. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? Selfie now. Anyway, um, if you do want to be a live streamer, I'll go ahead and take it first. Um, if you do want to be a live streamer, you can show up on uh, Fridays, the third Friday every month at KPFA headquarters. That's uh, Martin Luther King and University Avenue at 3 p.m. And we're always looking for new live streamers, so if you want to participate, uh, you can join us here in Berkeley. Uh, other than that, you can follow me on Twitter at Freeman Sullivan. And uh, if you want to email me, that's freemansullivan at gmail, or you can just Google Freeman Sullivan. Uh, everybody have a great day, and I love you so much. And remember to defend internet freedom. Much love, much peace.